So there are two reasons that I am filming right now. One, um, <clears throat> one, I have to deal with something in court. So like I'm in a different town than I usually am. And when I tell you how uncomfortable I am right now, okay? I don't want to go, I don't, I have major anxiety when it comes to court. I don't want to go sit in the courtroom right now. I have a while to wait. So I'm sitting in my car. I just found like a supermarket, right? And I'm just sitting here with the window down because I don't want to waste my gas. The place is far. I don't want to waste my gas. So I turn the car off. I'm just sitting here with my window down, right? And all I can hear, I'm scared to look over, but all I can hear is someone saying something like all these people are out here all around here smoking crack and is it because of my is it because of my skin color like everyone around here is all dark i'm the only white person I've already had a homeless woman approach my car and ask for money. I'm wondering if it was the gas station attendant. Because they must have... All I know is that I'm very uncomfortable right now, so I'm also pulling out my camera. Um, I have to also go to the police station after this, which is so much fun. Today has just been all about court. So I need to go to court this morning for like a totally unrelated reason, but last night I was sexually assaulted in person. Wow. Um, I've had a, f ow, 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 ow. ow. Mm, I've had a few minutes. I've spent the night thinking about it and I wanted to like talk about it last night as soon as it happened so it was fresh but I remember everything and I was so hysterical last night that um yeah it was just not good. So I'm gonna preface this by saying that you know I think I think the one of the major issues is that not enough I'm gonna say people because it's not just women. Not enough people speak out when they're assaulted or are made to feel uncomfortable. I think especially women in this particular case are made to feel like we're not supposed to draw attention to ourselves or like embarrass somebody in public. I know some people don't care either way, but at least that's how I was sort of brought up was Honestly, not to be very confrontational, especially towards men, which is kind of strange. Um, this guy keeps walking back and forth in the red shirt, and I think that's the guy who was just saying. Like this area is predominantly, I don't know the correct term. Y'all say African Americans or I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm just saying how it is. It literally like where I'm from is predominantly white. I'm Latin, but I look like a white person. Um, so I kind of pass. But that but there is still like I still see a, a lot of black people, a lot of Asian people, and a lot of Hispanic a lot of, a lot of Hispanic people in my town too, but it's like predominantly white. Here, I'm in Brockton, Massachusetts right now. Here, it's predominantly African, Latin. Um, but so this one guy, he is also, he's like my skin color. Maybe even a little darker, he looks Italian. But he was saying, he's like, oh, I'm hungry. He's like, all these 
people smoking crack around here and can I just get some food or something? Oh, he's snacking on something now. Anyway, that's beside the point. Not enough people are, I think, when something happens, because this is exactly how I feel. I don't wanna go through this process. I don't wanna go deal with police. I gotta be honest. I have a really bad taste in my mouth about them. I'm not gonna go out of my way to disrespect them, but I've never even been arrested. And I have just had really bad experiences with power hungry, egotistical police officers. That's my personal experience. So I already don't wanna go to the police station. I don't wanna have to fill out a report. I don't wanna go to court. I'm already going to court. I don't wanna have to go to court for this. And at the same time, I also feel like I'm almost being a drama queen. But I spent all last night, I'm gonna explain to you what happened, but I spent all last night looking up articles online, just trying to find something that's telling me that I'm being dramatic basically, because I just, I almost feel silly filing a report. But I know that if I don't, that like, I'm put in a position where I am so incredibly uncomfortable to go to this place again that I would I would avoid it. And why is it fair for me to be then inconvenienced out of a place I have been going to for 10 years because somebody else was perverted? So that's kind of my thing. I'm like in this weird like mentality where I almost feel guilty as the person it happened to uh, to do anything about it. So I'll explain to you guys what happened. You can formulate your own opinion, of course. But you gotta understand that I have been I was molested three times under the age of 18 by people over the age of 18. I was raped when I was 27. And I have been assaulted countless times. I mean, all throughout high school, it, it's not funny, but like I look back now and like even the boys would play these games where it's like, are you nervous? And they would put their hand on your thigh and like slowly work their way up your thigh and say, are you nervous now? Are you nervous now? And like the premise of the game was to tell them to stop because you got too nervous. And so like, that's just one of the games. So I have, and I'm sure many, 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 many of us have dealt with assault, to say the least. And we are almost made to feel stupid about doing anything about it or saying anything about it. I'm made to feel like I'm being dramatic. Oh, it's just another woman who's just crying that a man, like, but, okay, so here's the story. I live down the street from a gas station. I've lived in my house for 11 years now. Yeah, next month we'll make it 11 years. By the time this vlog comes out, it'll be 11 years. <laughs> 11 years, okay. So I have frequented this gas station. I have seen this gas station become like three different gas stations in the past decade. And the most recent one has stuck it has seemed to stick around. It doesn't really seem to be going anywhere. And there was this particular employee, he was an older gentleman, who his, mm, I don't wanna give out too, my, too much detail to like. This older gentleman worked there and you know, it was just kind of one of those things where he might make like a comment or two, but everything st stayed pretty, um, you know, mellow. Like nothing was too out of line. Until probably, I think this past year, he's been trying to see what boundaries he can cross because the first instance that he genuinely straight up made me feel uncomfortable was I was checking out with him one day and he was working with another coworker behind the counter and he says um, something along the lines of that I'm his favorite customer 
but if I showed him my tits, that I would definitely be a favorite customer. And at the time, I just laughed it off like most of us do, because I was uncomfortable and extremely thrown off guard. That was the first instance. Then the second incident was I had walked in and he was checking out another customer, another male customer. And he must have known this male customer, maybe just because he was a regular or something. So I walk in and I remember I went over to like the nacho area. Look, there's even like police circling the... So I went over to the nacho area. I'm just vlogging. I'm not smoking crack. So I walk over to the... It had like a nacho thing. So I just went over and got... I was getting myself some nachos. And I, when I walked back in line, they were still checking out. But the guy who the story is about said to the other customer or said to me about the other customer watch out like he'll grab your ass or pinch your ass or something like that so i look at the customer and he has this just like mortified expression on his face like I couldn't believe what just came out of that guy's mouth he couldn't believe what he just said he's like no 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 he's like I would never I said no I I know he's a jokester like I know you wouldn't do that it's okay like I'm not offended but the the poor man thought he was gonna get slapped but it's me like I, I know how the other guy is so that was the second thing this third time oh my god this this drew the line this drew the line i'm going to get my um license to well in new hampshire you can actually i just researched this there was like a law correct me if i'm wrong please but there was like a law that we don't need a license to carry or to conceal the carry either correct me if i'm wrong but like look it up because i think that might actually be a thing i'm looking for protection for myself i am I'm all done. I'm all done because I went to a gas station last night. Mind you, after these two last incidences with just the comments, I was already extremely uncomfortable. I had told my boyfriend at the time, like, if you're with me and I have to run in, can you please run in for me? Like, it was getting to the point of where I was avoiding him. But he, I remember him telling me that he was, like, supposed to be moving and stuff, which I was just relieved. I was like, oh, thank God. Like, even if, like, what I'm going to tell you didn't happen yet, like, he was just making me very uncomfortable. So I was glad that he was going to be gone. I guess it didn't work out. Like, they didn't, his family didn't want him there, probably because he's trouble. I don't know so he like came back to work at the gas station and then now I only see him there like part-time because I'm avoiding him I don't know what the situation is I go in last night and I go to and I go to check out um, as soon as I walk in I'm with my boyfriend and we see the back of him he's not facing us but he's in the store and I'm like like I look at Josh and he looks at me like we're both like, oh no, like we see the back of this guy and we know it's him. So we, um, so we kind of just like immediately go to, he's busy like talking to another customer. So he doesn't see us right away. So we go right up to the counter to just grab what we got to get, get out of there, right? As fast as we can. Like I'm hoping he won't even know we're there. We're standing side by side, Josh and I, we're standing side by side in the line. And all of a sudden, I feel these two arms come around. I wish I could set you guys up here. You're a little crooked, but where the sun is, I can't put you on my GPS holder. But he comes up behind me and puts his arms around me. And Josh was paying attention, but he had his arms on like himself. He was grabbing himself. He wasn't groping me or anything um but yeah he 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 basically pinned my arms and I was standing there and I have this really bad thing sometimes that I'm working on where I just get scared and I'll freeze so I'm sitting there like oh <laughs> like who is it and I know damn well who it is because I can smell the beer on his breath I could feel Ah, ah. this is the worst part about like being sexually assaulted is the feeling after how dirty you feel like i could literally oh i don't like it i could literally 
feel his breath on my neck. Ew! Um, so Josh grabbed him by the arm. And as soon as he grabbed him by the arm, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, you're not going to touch her. So Josh grabbed him by the arm. And once he grabbed him by the arm, he did let go. But like when he, sorry, when he was talking in my ear, he was like, he's like, you're, he's like, you're one of my favorite customers. He repeated what he had said like that first time with a tit comment. He didn't say anything about my boobs, but he said like, oh, you're one of my favorite customers. And was like grabbing me and in my ear, oh, I can feel it. It's like a ghost breath. I don't. Oh, if you've never experienced it, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about, but I literally like, it almost feels like someone's touching me right here. And, um, I'm literally, the shittiest part about this is I'm already on medication due to PTSD, due to sexual trauma. <laughs> and I just started these medications a month ago. I feel like I've taken five steps back here. So Josh grabs him and he go, he's like, oh, oh, I didn't even mean anything by it. He's just like, uh, she's just one of my favorites. He's like, yeah, but you know, she's been through stuff. He wanted to protect my privacy, which I really appreciate. He's like, he, she, she's been through stuff. Like we're not gonna touch her. And he's like, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't mean anything by it. But Josh was so I really thought he was about to punch the man in the face. Like, I really thought that we were about to mop this old man. Josh had to go, oh my gosh. Like, we were going home and he was heated. He's like, I, you have to understand, guys. It's not just like an uh, unconsensual hug, okay? A hug from behind is extremely intimate. It's ask any man that you know are they gonna hug a friend woman that they're not attracted to or not interested from behind unless they're your mama or like a family like someone that you adore or love or it's a very intimate especially between like a man and a woman if you don't have an intimate relationship or like a family relationship where it's like like i'll hug my kids from behind you know what i mean it's not intimate it's affection I don't know you. I don't know. You check me out at a gas station. I don't know you. We're not at this level whatsoever. Luckily, he did not have like his pelvis pressed up against me. These were details Josh was telling me later because I was just in so much shock. Um, his pelvis was not pressed up against me, but he did have his like chest pressed up against me with his arms. And then again, his head was like resting on me. Um... But yeah, after that, I could I could tell how heated Josh was. I was afraid that it was going to escalate. There were other customers in there, so it was very awkward. So we got out of there. Um, but I had, like, it <laughs> think about it in, like, an animalistic sense for a moment. If you've ever watched any nature documentary whatsoever, I felt like I was mounted like an animal. And it was extremely also disrespectful to my boyfriend because it was like, yeah, I know you're standing next to your woman, but like, watch, I'm going to touch her anyways. And that's why he's like about to lose his mind. And I had to get him out of there to make sure that he didn't get into trouble. If I smack him, that's self-defense. He smacks him, they're both going to jail. I really had to calm Josh down, bring him down a little bit. Um, I really had to... You know try to say it's okay it's okay it's okay when it really wasn't i went home i cried i had to i had to strip my clothes off because again i just felt like like you ever see like a lion or even a lion even a dog like a female animal i don't really care a mammal and in the animal kingdom when a man wants to mate or be romantic or show affection or they're gonna climb on top of the woman from behind. And like, you don't see him coming. I didn't know he was behind me. The, I just saw him over on the other side talking to somebody and all of a sudden you're mounting me? So, yeah. 
So I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really in this dilemma of like, again, I'm so scared of dealing with police. But like, I really think I should at least file a report because it's, it's, he's only escalating. He's constantly drunk. And then he has a firearm. Like I, again, I'm not anti pew pews whatsoever. Um, but I don't think it should be in the hands of someone irresponsible. And I don't think he's responsible. He scares me. Again, constantly drunk has now grabbed me. Um, I don't think I really want to be in this parking lot very long, to be honest with you. I'm just afraid that, like, I'm going to go in there and they're going to be like, all this for a hug? But it wasn't just a hug. Like, he's said comments before. And even then, even if you go up to somebody and touch him on the shoulder, if you don't have their consent, that's assault. But at the very least, I have to share what happened because... I'm just real freaking tired of it happening. Um, hi. I know this is like... <laughs> I have a dilemma where my lanyard literally got stuck in my earring and I can't get it out. Um, I like bent over with my lanyard and I can't get it because my nails are, are so long right now that I can't quite get the backing to my... I can't quite get... <gasps> no, because if I can't get this out, I can't, like, the back. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <gasps> oh. Okay, I got the back out. I can't get this off. If I have to go pick up John, okay, thank God. For a minute, I, was, I thought I was going to have to go drive with this lanyard stuck in my ear.